Okay, let's solve the following system using the RREF feature of our calculator. To begin with, let's note that we have actually four variables here, or four unknowns, but only three equations. Okay, so something interesting may happen here. I don't know. We'll just take a, a minute and see. Let's go to our calculator. And let's enter this matrix into our calculator. Remember to do that. We'll say second matrix. And since we're going to input the matrix, let's go over to the Edit menu. And notice in this particular problem, we have three rows and five columns. So let's edit our first matrix and make it a three by five matrix. And then enter our elements. Okay, so I went ahead and entered the matrix in. Let's go ahead and check it to make sure it's correct. Again, we have three rows, five columns. So I'm going to check it by going down the columns, comparing it to my original system. 4, negative 2, 10, negative 3, negative 1, 0. Notice the missing y term in the third equation. We would put a 0 in its place. 1, 2, negative 5, 1, 7, negative 20, 21, 2, and 15. Okay, we have now successfully entered our matrix. Let's go back to the entry edit screen. Second, quit. Tell the calculator we want to use the RREF feature. Second, matrix. Scroll over to math. Scroll down to RREF. Press enter. Now we need to select matrix A, so second matrix, leave it on names and choose matrix A, close our parentheses, and press enter. Now you'll notice some decimal places here. If we want to force it to show us the fraction form, we can do that by hitting the math button, selecting math frac, that's the very first option there. And that's going to take our matrix and show the fractions for it. Now you'll also notice the dot, 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 the ellipses, at the end it tells us I can scroll to the right to see what's happening. So our reduced row echelon form actually doesn't look quite as nice as some of the others we have seen. And the reason that is it's because, well, we didn't actually get a single unique solution. So let's copy this down into our notes, and then we can write down what it means. Okay, so here's our augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, as given to us by our calculator. Now, technically, it is in reduced row echelon form, which states that if there's a row of zeros, it must occur at the bottom of the matrix. Here that happens. Every non-zero row begins with a 1. That happens. Every leading 1 is going to have a 0 above and below the leading 1. That happens here. And that doesn't violate this because there's no leading 1 down here, so those are fine. The problem is it doesn't give us a single unique solution. Let's see what it does give us. If I take the augmented matrix and write it back out in its equation form, I could say x minus one-half z minus two w equals three halves, and y minus z minus three w equals a negative five. So the problem is we don't have this solved. I want to rewrite it, though, in a special way called parametric form so that I can clearly represent what the infinite number of solutions will actually look like. So to do that, I'll solve each of the equations for the variables where the leading one exists. So in the first equation, I would say x equals 1 half z plus 3 half 
plus 2w plus 3 halves. And the second equation would tell me y equals z plus 3w minus 5. The next step would say to introduce new variables for each variable that appears on the right hand side of the equations. And so let's introduce two new variables. Let r represent the variable z and let s represent the w. I can then rewrite my system as x equals one half r plus two s plus three halves y equals r plus three s minus five and by our assumption we would say z is equal to r and w is equal to s and so our solution then can be written as this ordered four tuple. One half r plus two s plus three halves. That's the x coordinate. R plus three s minus five. That's the y coordinate. The z coordinate is r and the w coordinate is s. This is a case of infinitely many solutions and this is what the solution will look like. I could pick out any different number of ordered four tuples that will work to solve the original system by choosing whatever I want for r and whatever I want for s and then generating different solutions. What we've done so far will suffice to answer the questions that was given to us, and that is just to solve the original system. I will take one more minute, though, to address the fact that we would say this system is consistent, because again, it has at least one solution, yet it is dependent because it has more than one.